In this lesson, we will review the structure of the extensor expansion, which is the location where the extensor tendon meets the various other intrinsic muscles. Let's start by looking at a simple line drawing of the three digits, the middle, index, and ring finger, as seen here. We will put the extensor expansion over the middle finger. And we'll start by looking at the extensor tendon that makes its way over the metacarpal and then divides and extends over the metacarpophalangeal joint in the form of a hood, known as the extensor hood, as seen here. This extensor hood provides a further support over the dorsum of the metacarpophalangeal joint, and it's an expansile connective tissue. This then divides into three slips. The first one of these is known as the middle slip, and it is over the center of the finger and extends up to the base of the middle phalanx as shown here. There are two additional slips known as the lateral slips. One is on the radial side of the finger, while the other is on the ulnar side of the finger as seen here. The lateral slips are seen going here, and the second lateral slip is seen going over here, and they unite distally to form the terminal slip as seen here. And the terminal slip then attaches onto the base of the distal phalanx. This is an important arrangement that allows for individual function at each joint in terms of flexion and extension. And it does have some clinical significance in terms of injuries of the extensor mechanism. We can review the extensor expansion in a photograph of a cadaver dissection. Here we have one finger with the extensor expansion exposed quite clearly. In the lower part of the photograph, we have the proximal part of the finger with the extensor tendon entering the base of the digit. This then becomes expanded to form the extensor hood as seen here. There are a number of fibers running in different directions. It then splits into three segments. The first one of those is the middle slip, which is seen over here. And this goes and attaches onto the base of the middle phalanx. There are additionally two lateral slips as seen here. And these continue on their way up to the terminal phalanx. And just before they determinate, they form the terminal slip. And the terminal slip then attaches onto the base of the distal phalanx. So this is the extensor expansion, and it allows for some interesting movements and control of manual dexterity. Note also the interossei and lumbricals, which are attaching onto the extensor expansion, as seen in the lower part of the photograph at the proximal end of the digit. Depending on where the extensor expansion might be injured or damaged due to pathology, a number of different clinical presentations are possible. Two of these clinical presentations are seen on the right side of your screen. The mallet finger, or the baseball finger, is a result of the tear in the terminal slip at the DIP joint. Due to forced flexion of the DIP joint, you might have an injury onto the terminal slip, and then it results in what is known as an extensor lag. The DIP joint is kept in a position of flexion. Another presentation is seen in the photograph in the lower side of your screen, the boutonniere deformity. In this case, the middle slip is torn at the PIP joint, and therefore the PIP joint falls into a position of flexion as seen here. Over time, the lateral slips can migrate in a palmar or volar direction, and they in fact become flexors of the PIP joint rather than remaining extensors and they can in fact exacerbate the flexion deformity at the PIP joint. And with their further shortening, they can hyperextend the DIP joint. And that produces the classic boutonniere deformity as seen in the diagram. 